So here we are, Charlie Lee, uh, Roger Veer on the Coins Bank cruise in the middle of the Mediterranean. Charlie and I have known each other since, I guess, 2011, I think, was the first email exchange. Does that sound right to you? I think we met at um, the New York conference. Oh, the August, yeah. The, uh, that Bruce, was the first Bruce, time. Uh, yeah. I forget his last name now, but we, Bruce is was a, a New York yeah, conference. Yeah, Bruce Wagner? Yeah, Wagner, that's yeah. it. Yeah, the there Bitcoin a, show. <laughs> yeah, the Bitcoin show. There was, um, before the conference, I think you... You organized something like a meetup at a cafe. Yeah, in, in Silicon Valley there. I no, think. no, no. At, or in New York. In New York. Okay. New York. Uh, I just showed up and met you and Jesse Powell. And okay. Some real, few, real early yeah, Bitcoiners yeah. were there. Yeah. So yeah, That was a, a real good conference. Yep. And it, yeah. It was, uh, how many people do you think were there? 40? 50? 40. Yeah. yeah. If, if that. So was, really, was really early. Gavin numbers. was there. Of course Gavin was there. Yeah. yeah. I Gavin remember chatting good. with him about multi-signature way wow. back when. Yeah, August of 2011. So yeah. here we are now in September of 2018. The world has changed quite a bit in that time. Sure. Lots has happened. Uh, Litecoin is one of the top 10 cryptocurrencies in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations on that. The original Bitcoin split into Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Core. Charlie would probably disagree with my phrasing out of that in that way. I'd, I'd love to hear why you think that it's wrong to phrase it that way, assuming you do. Or to tell... Tell me why you think Bitcoin Cash isn't the real Bitcoin. <laughs> well, um, let's say, let me put it this way. So, like, it's a decentralized currency, so you, so you can call it whatever you want, right? As long as you get the, um, as long as the, you're, whoever you're talking to understand what you're talking about. Right? So, it's just like English, right? So, if I want to call something something else, if you understand what I'm talking about, then it's just, it's language. So, so it sounds like you're saying definitions are really important in order to make people understand what is yeah being so about. the reason why i don't like the the phrase bitcoin cash is it gets confusing right so um and for language confusion is bad so if i if a merchant says i accept bitcoin and then the the um the person buying whatever product says do you accept bitcoin cash the merchant will be like i said i accept bitcoin and cash is that what you mean and then it gets confusing and then if he sends if the sender sends bitcoin cash the merchant didn't get it because he only accepted Bitcoin. It's just, it's not good for, for communication. Sure. So, so confusion have, is bad. I think we agree. Confusion, that confusion is bad. Is and people bad. have um, so can suggested I, the term Bcash. It's not. I mean, I think you think it's derogatory, but it so it was, definitely. It was, if if I can jump in here yeah, a little bit, it's more than just derogatory. It was an intentional social media manipulation campaign to change the name of Bitcoin Cash to Bcash, and BTC supporters. That didn't like Bitcoin Cash went and registered our B Cash and some other B Cash domains and Twitters and basically tried to steer the entire community towards these anti Bitcoin Cash websites using the name B Cash. Well, I, I have think, you read about? Are you aware of that that went on? Or yeah, it's people. And it was people, very clearly an orchestrated, intentional campaign. Do you do we agree on that? What do you mean by orchestrated? I mean, it was there was an intentional effort to have the name of Bitcoin Cash become B Cash and to steer all the people that were looking into that particular fork. On the, other side of version the, of Bitcoin. on the other side of coin, there's a campaign to uh, to steer, to make Bitcoin cash be Bitcoin and okay. to confuse people saying from Bitcoin.com saying Bitcoin cash is Bitcoin. So from there, Bitcoin's Twitter account saying Bitcoin cash is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's so Twitter account. Let, 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 ways, let me right? correct that right now though. So Bitcoin's Twitter account has nothing to do with me. I don't own it. I didn't pay that. Okay. Well, saying lots of people a, on the internet do seem to think that I, I bought or paid off no, that I, account or did something. I have nothing I, to do I with that. I don't believe so. that. I mean, there are people who truly support Bitcoin cash and want. Clearly. <laughs> Real people. You're sitting next to one. Yeah. Um, who, so we think that Bitcoin Cash is the real Bitcoin. So can I ask you to define what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin? What is the definition of Bitcoin for you? Uh, it's what the majority of people think. So just like, uh, so like my, let me finish. So okay. like my example of a of a language, right? If, for example, a very good example, crypto. Crypto used to stand for cryptocurrencies, but now, oh, sorry. Crypto uses that for crypt cryptography. cryptography. Yeah. See how confused now it I am means right cryptocurrencies. Now? Yeah. Now, okay. for most people, it means cryptocurrencies. Okay. And people who want to latch on to the fact that crypto meant cryptography are complaining, saying you're using it wrong. But the reality is, time has changed. Time has changed. So okay. now, crypto to most people stands for cryptocurrencies, or it could be it could stand for cryptocurrencies and cryptography. It could be um, unclear. But the fact of the matter is, things change, and the consensus. You just had to follow consensus, right? So if you stick to the old definition of crypto, you can confuse people. And that's not good. So you kind of had to follow. So if Bitcoin Cash 
eventually does become Bitcoin, everyone will call it Bitcoin, right? People wouldn't call it Bitcoin Cash or Bcash because it will become Bitcoin. So it sounds like what you're telling me is that the because everybody calls the BTC version of Bitcoin Bitcoin today, that it is Bitcoin. Correct. Right. And because everybody calls crypto is in reference to cryptocurrencies, crypto now means that. Correct. So that means that the the coin that has the underlying fundamental characteristics that made Bitcoin Bitcoin originally is Bitcoin Cash, and the ticker with B, the coin with the ticker symbol BTC now doesn't have the original characteristics I don't, that made I don't Bitcoin agree Bitcoin. About but the people original are, characteristics of making Bitcoin Bitcoin. So I, I put together a list. Yeah, um, and I, I think your list is wrong. Okay, well let's let, let's go over it if you don't mind. Sure. So. So here, with the first thing on the list that I had here was that things that make Bitcoin, Bitcoin, and tell me if you agree or disagree, it needs to be a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system as defined right there in the very title of the Bitcoin white paper. Do you agree or disagree with that being one of the characteristics that makes Bitcoin, Bitcoin? Uh, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And it's kind of nitty-gritty to try to define Bitcoin by like a few set of um, things and it's, I, I agree. it's in the title of the Bitcoin white paper that was released to the world. You're saying that that isn't a good starting place for a definition of what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin. If you want, that's I, I'm asking you. That's one. I, I think it does, but that's one characteristic. One characteristic of Bitcoin. Okay. So, um, so we agree on that one. Things, things could change over time, but right now I, I do agree that Bitcoin is an electronic peer-to-peer -peer cash system. The definition of what makes Bitcoin Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. We, we agree on that, friend? Well, like I already told you, definitions change, right? So Bitcoin So how about right today? Now. Sure. Okay. And in the future, maybe not. But today, we agree that the thing that makes Bitcoin Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system? <laughs> Going back to the same point, it doesn't make Bitcoin Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just Bitcoin, right? It's whatever Let's, let's define agrees. our terms so that we can agree. Because right. if I just say, you know, Blue is blue. Well, let's define what blue is, right? Let's define what Bitcoin is. Things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin. I'm saying that one of the things that defines what Bitcoin is is it's being a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, which is in the very title of the Bitcoin white paper. And I feel like you're pushing back and disagreeing with that being one of the things that makes Bitcoin. Are you disagreeing? I don't, I don't agree that's one of the properties of Bitcoin. You don't agree? I agree that it's one of the properties of Bitcoin. Okay. But I don't agree that you have to define, like, if it does, if it's not that, it's not Bitcoin. Okay. Um, so, like, for example, what makes Litecoin Litecoin? Litecoin doesn't have a white paper. Yeah, right. I, I think you get to decide for the most part on that one. No, no. What I you tell me? What decide. makes Litecoin Litecoin? It's I, I have the community decides. Right? Okay. So if there's a Litecoin Cash fork, just like Bitcoin Cash, okay. if the community decides that's Litecoin, I can like scream at the top of the roof that that's not my vision of Litecoin. Okay. But if everyone wants to call that Litecoin and wants to call what I'm working on right now, like Litecoin Core or something stupid like that, then that's so, so, so I, be it, right? I think I disagree, and I so I, I think that words have meanings and very clear meanings. And even if everybody starts calling something something that it isn't actually, I think those people would be wrong. And so with Bitcoin, so you would fight against the majority because you think the majority is wrong. Of course, that's why I got involved in Bitcoin from day one. The majority, Just the of, definition, the of majority the of the world thinks that fiat currencies are great. I think cryptocurrencies are much better. I was against the majority when I got. That's why I got involved no, I'm talking, in Bitcoin. I'm talking about the definition of a word. And of, of course, I right? think I think words have meanings, and I think the meanings are very important. And but that's, if everyone thinks this word stands for this meaning, and you're the only one that is against that, you're just going to keep fighting. I'll have to decide <laughs> when that day comes. But there's a large okay. group of people that think very clear that Bitcoin Cash has the characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin more than the BTC version of Bitcoin does at the moment. So. So peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash let system, me, you're on, you're you on the edge? Why, why does the name matter? Like, why do you I'll care tell you, about... I'll tell you exactly why the name matters. The name matters incredibly much because it has worldwide recognition. That Everybody has heard about Bitcoin in just about everywhere in the world at this point. They haven't necessarily used it, but they've heard of it. And that's worth a lot. And that's why the BTC version of Bitcoin is so insistent on trying to maintain the name because they're using all the goodwill that were that was uh, brought to the world by people I'll like me. I'll be honest with you. Bitcoin is a decentralized... Uh, okay decentralized system so there's no like BTC people trying to hold on to the name it, so that's, it's like, that's nonsense it's whatever. Charlie there's a but so there's individuals only individuals act but individuals can coalesce into groups with common goals and work together to achieve those goals and there's a big giant group of individuals that are working very hard to demonize Bitcoin cash and to promote BTC as being the why? real version of Bitcoin do you know why because they well, feel like you're Bitcoin, one of them so why do you why are they doing that because they feel like Bitcoin cash is attack on the brand of Bitcoin okay All right so in in traditional 
companies, if someone came out with a company called Apple Advance or Apple II or something, you, Apple can sue, right? So, so Charlie, with a decentralized money, there is no no one owns the term Bitcoin. Okay. So, so people who want to protect the the branding or the image and not cause confusion about Bitcoin would want to. So how about the people that want to protect, protect the branding and the image and the, the name of Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and have watched the BTC chain be forked into something that can hardly be called a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system and the people promoting BTC mock the idea of using this cash. Bitcoin is how a... about those people that want to defend the Bitcoin name from these people that are trying to morph Bitcoin into something that's you not have, even described in the right title of the that. white paper? You have a right to do that. So, okay. so who's in the right? The it's people that want to maintain opinions. Bitcoin as what was described in the original Bitcoin defining white paper, people, or the people that have, want to you use have a it different as opinion than someone else. Clearly, right? so who's in the right? History will decide. So here, next on my list of things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin, taken directly from the original Bitcoin.org website, low fee. Do you think that's one of the characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin? Uh. Where in the website does it say it's low fee? It was right there on the very front page of Bitcoin.org from like 2011 but through Bitcoin, like 2017. Bitcoin.org doesn't really define Bitcoin, right? It's So I'll tell you what so happened. So Bitcoin.org, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what happened. If, if I can add I'll a little bit though, and then you can yeah, tell yeah, us what happened. Bitcoin.org, for anybody that doesn't know, was the original website set up by Satoshi Nakamoto to start promoting Bitcoin and sharing Bitcoin with the world. It's where the original Bitcoin white paper was published uh, for the entire world to see to this very day. And it was right there on the front page of the Bitcoin.org website for years, like maybe seven years, eight years, that Bitcoin had low fees. And it was right there on the front page. So what happened? What happened was um, Bitcoin, when we actually met in 2011, Bitcoin was perfect for everything. It was low fees, fast transactions, everything confirmed within 10 minutes or on average, um, censorship resistant, immutable. Um, the problem is as... It, it wouldn't last because the reason why it was that way beginning is because of the block rewards. So initially, the blocks were paying off 50 Bitcoins. Let me finish. Okay. 50 Bitcoins. Um, so it was paying for the the cost of this decentralized network. So can I ask you to, to clarify? Yeah. So what was the block reward when we first met in dollar terms? It's not uh, block reward in dollar terms. Uh, Maybe a hundred bucks. Was it twenty five already something? when we met? I forget. Whatever. Okay, it's like yeah, call, yeah it's call twenty bucks a bitcoin, so a thousand dollars a block. Sure. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, but then you have to realize back then the blockchain was a lot smaller, the community was smaller, so it cost less to maintain this decentralized network. So the the thing with decentralized network is it's um, it's expensive by definition. So if you want to decentralize something. You have 10,000 nodes, and each node is doing the same calculation. So it's 10,000 times as expensive as a centralized service, like, for example, Visa MasterCard. And this is just a simplified, like, explanation. I um, so someone has to pay for that, right? So initially, the block rewards pays for it. The idea, Satoshi's The plan, $1,000 a block when we first met? Yeah. Okay. Satoshi's plan was that um, over time, block rewards would have every four years. And transaction fees will start to pay for the 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 network, right? It costs there's a cost to have a decentralized network. So as block rewards halves over time, you've we had, had how to, many havings now? Two, two since then. So we we went from fifty to, to twelve and a half today to, to twenty fifty to twenty five to twelve and a half today. Correct. What's the block reward today in dollars? Um, what is it? Yeah. In the ballpark, yeah, in, in the ballpark of maybe seventy thousand or so. Okay. Yeah. So it was a thousand dollars per block when we first met to secure the network. Yeah. The block reward has been cut in half twice. Yeah. And now the block reward is around seventy thousand dollars per block to secure the network. Yeah. Does that seem like the amount of security securing the network got more or less secure over time, even though the amount of bitcoins in the block, sorry, the amount of bitcoins in each block dropped by by a fourth. Uh, is that more well, or less security? Seventy thousand dollars is more or less secure than one thousand dollars per block to secure the network. Relatively, it's less. So seventy thousand dollars is less secure. Miners. But yet, how much has the hash rate gone up? The hash rate has gone up like so the hash rate, a million times. So that, like that. Mean, more hash rate means more security, right? Correct. So the block reward. But in, we're paying them less for that much more. Seventy thousand dollars is less than one thousand dollars. Seventy thousand. What seventy times increase in payment? To the network. Yep. 
but the hash rate has gone up. The security of Bitcoin has gone up a lot more than that. Yeah. So we are paying them. We are per security per amount of per hash. hash. Yeah. We're paying them less. That sounds a lot like Moore's law in effect, right? Where it's the computing power is getting yeah. more efficient. So let me let me year. finish. So as block rewards go get had, the transaction fees need to start paying for for the cost of the decentralized network. Okay. So what happens then is um, so you don't get to you don't get the cake and eat it too. So, so you have to make. You I want to ask a compliment. question. Though. Let me finish. Well, you just you, you asserted something. I want to ask what okay. the reason why you said. Block uh, transaction fees have to pay for the miners to secure the network rather than the block reward. Why? When we just saw that the block reward, even though it's one fourth of what it is in dollar terms, it's seventy times what it was when we first met. Well, the network has grown a lot too, right? Okay. So it's not the same small network. So I'm asking why? Why do the fees have to the network fees have to take over for the block reward when the block That's reward the whole has gone? Plan, right. The uh, whole plan is within like year 2100 or 21 something so about 100 years all, into the future sure all the blocks all the block rewards will disappear and the transaction fees will pay for the network okay this is how 120 years in the future right well about like 50 40 50 years in the future the block rewards will be so small compared to the transaction fees that it would it wouldn't dominate the transaction fees I mean, we could, we that's debatable too that's I think debatable. right because the block rewards one fourth what it was and but the transaction block reward is much 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 higher in dollar terms than it was previously sure um but the point is that satoshi designed the system to bootstrap the currency that's where where the block rewards the inflation is paying for it's kind of like a startup where when the startup is small you use equity to pay for your employees but as it grows bigger you pay less and less equity and afterwards at the end the end game is you don't need to pay equity you just pay salary because you have you actually have money that's how you bootstrap a startup and the currency is bootstrapped in a very similar way where you're using inflation which is like equity to pay the miners initially and as that decreases you start paying them with transaction fees so let me continue my point um, as the network grows as the, the startup bootstrap uh, grows in time you have to make a, a trade-off, right? So Bitcoin cannot be... So you've asserted that. Why do you have to make this trade-off? I'm not convinced that a trade-off has to be made there. Okay. When we already saw that the amount of dollars per block is significantly increased over time, even though the amount of Bitcoins per block has dropped by one-fourth, right? Or to one-fourth of what it was previously. So can you clarify why you think that you have to make that trade-off? Because I'm, I'm not convinced of that. Um, okay, so... Let me try to explain this. So to kind of think of this in one way, it's that... So my assertion, if I can clarify, the amount of money that the miners are paid per block in dollar terms, which is what most of the world measures their you know money in at this point, is significantly higher than what it was initially when the block reward was 50 bitcoins per block. Now the block reward is 12 and a half bitcoins. And they get way more. So, I, and the network has way more hash rate on the network. So the network's much more secure now, even though the block reward is one fourth of what it was previously. Your assertion is that we have to convert all that over to fees uh, to pay for the security, rather not, than not the block right reward. Away, right. So it's it's a slow process. Right. So over, so do you over think time, we did it too early? Yeah, we definitely did it too early because Bitcoin got too popular too fast. Okay. So do you disagree with Greg Maxwell when he was talking about popping the champagne because the fees are so high and? Well, I don't know the exact quote, but my guess is he was, I think he was happy. Okay, I don't know the quote, but I would, if I were him, I'd be happy to see a fee market develop because we know that over time you need a fee market for Bitcoin to be sustainable. So that's another assertion. We have a hundred and something years in the future. Okay, that's an assertion that a lot of of developers, um, myself included, agree that we eventually will need a fee market. How many economists agree with that? Uh, I don't know. I think not too many. How do you know? Uh, I consider myself an economist, so. Okay. Yeah. And uh, most of the economists I know think that it's a bunch of nonsense when you, it's called a production quota. I mean, mean, maybe 90% 90 of the economists in the world don't believe Bitcoin could work. So So maybe those are wrong, so. Anyhow, we're, we're still, the topic was low fee. Is that one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin or, or not? It's not because, the, it's not. I'll tell you why, right? Please? Because last year, fees on average were like $10. And 
And so because Bitcoin no longer had the characteristic of low fees, then the low fee is no longer one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin. Is that the circular reason you just gave me there? It's not circular reason because if you, if you define that as Bitcoin, then when fees start to become a dollar, does it all of a sudden not become Bitcoin? I would say that does it's like, lost Does Litecoin more. then became Bitcoin? Because like Litecoin doesn't share the same genesis block with the, both the BTC and the BCH network, so that's a pretty pretty important difference. So then Bitcoin ceased to exist because Bitcoin fees were high? This is before I think Bitcoin lo- Cash existed. I think it lost some of its Bitcoinness. yes. It lost some of its Bitcoinness, but you're saying it defines Bitcoin. I'm saying so it's without a, hold on. I'm saying it's one of the characteristics that define Bitcoin. Okay. And I have a list of I think it's ten characteristics okay. here. Okay. And I think that's one of the things that defines Bitcoin. Okay. Because it was listed right there on the very front page of the Bitcoin.org website, and so you're on the fence on that one, or what are your thoughts for low fee defining Bitcoin being one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin? Um. So you got the low fees part from Bitcoin Network. Bitcoin mm-hmm. Network. So they put that there because at that point in time, it was one of the great features of Bitcoin. So my question Where is, is that not, one of the defining features no, it's of not. what? No, because it's not. So I think in the future, I can see a I can see a future where Bitcoin fees, on chain fees, are fairly high in terms of like wire transfer fees, ten twenty dollars, and you use Lightning Network for payments that okay. are backed onto the Bitcoin blockchain. Lower fees, faster transactions, more private. So second layer solutions would make fees cheaper, but on-chain fees... So on-chain low fees are not one of the defining characteristics Correct. of Bitcoin, despite the fact it was on the front page of Bitcoin.org for like maybe eight years? But the, it's on the page of Bitcoin.org about low fees. It's not about right on on-chain front. low fees, correct? Well, that when Bitcoin.org launched, like Lightning Network wasn't even in a dream yet. Sure, and so, so it wasn't so a very, transactions, so it's so not sort of Very, right? very, so. very clearly, the low fee on the front page of Bitcoin.org was in reference to on-chain transactions because there were no other types of transactions sure. on Bitcoin. Sure, Okay, yeah. so but, low fee is one of the defining or is not we, one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin. And then we'll move to the next point on the list if you're okay. On-chain that. low fees is not a defining characteristic of Bitcoin. Okay. I think we want to um, strive for low okay. fees using Bitcoin. Okay. And Litecoin, whether it's on chain or so off I, chain. I think I understand. So, despite the fact that Bitcoin.org said low fees on the front page for like eight years in reference to on chain transactions for Bitcoin, according to Charlie, that's not one of the defining characteristics well, of Bitcoin. And I mean, that's you're, fine. You're, you're, you're saying on chain, but nowhere on the website does it say low fees for on chain. Well, right? There, only, there, there only was on chain. So, it was definitely. <laughs> what yeah, else but was there? The networks get upgraded. In 2000. Okay, right? I'm, I'm not disagreeing. Most people would agree Lightning Network is an improvement okay. on Bitcoin. So you may not agree. Can you help me set agree. up a Lightning Network wallet on my phone here? And send me Lightning Network is still being developed on. Uh, I can probably okay. help you set up a Lightning Network wallet, but I'm not. I actually. I have an iPhone. Can you set up me up a, a Lightning Network wallet? You can probably do it yourself. Uh, I have. I honest to God have no idea how. You should Google it. Uh, the last time I googled it, there was no way to do it on iPhone, and I don't think that that's changed. So. I don't. I don't know. I don't use an iPhone, so I don't know. Okay. Um, there, there are quite a I, few. I checked pretty recently, and there was there was no way to install a Lightning Network wallet on the iPhone. Yeah, and when I found about Bitcoin, there was no way for me to install a Bitcoin wallet Very on true. my iPhone, right? So things improve over time. Okay. Um, have patience. And I, I'm, I I'm eager. I'm eager for things to improve over time. That's why I'm pushing so hard to make these improvements happen sooner rather than sure. later. So that brings us to the next thing that I do think defines Bitcoin, because it was listed right there on the front page of Bitcoin.org for nearly a decade. Uh, fast payments. Do you think fast payment is, or do you think that's one of the defining characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin? Uh, yeah, I would, I mean, we, sh- we should strive for fast payments. So, so I, I, we both totally agree we should strive for fast payments. Is fast payments one of the defining characteristics that makes Bitcoin Bitcoin? Sure. Okay, so we agree that fast payments define, is one of the defining characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin. But low fee is not one of the defining characteristics. On chain low fees. Even I though said. both of these came right from the very I front page of Bitcoin.org. Low fees. Okay. Bitcoin.org was referring to on chain. No, it wasn't. It was referring to Bitcoin. And when Bitcoin launched, was there anything other than on chain? When Bitcoin launched, was there multi sig transactions? No. Right. Are multi sig transactions not Bitcoin transactions? I think multi sig transactions were planned from day one, though. No. No? And if I'm wrong about that, then, then I'm wrong. Where so, they, so are they not Bitcoin transactions? I think that you Bitcoin can, or didn't talk about it in 2011. Does I that mean it's not Bitcoin transactions? So when I got involved in 2011, multi-sig transactions were already being discussed. I'd, I'd have to go and do some additional Google research to see what happened before 2011 in regards to that. Okay. So, um, 
So my point is things get upgraded over time, right? So so I have, initially, I have a question for initially you. Initially, on-chain was low fee and fast. Okay. And then it got slower because of congestion and the fees were went up because of uh, because of people Why did the congestion get, happen? Because Bitcoin got really popular and a lot of people want to use, a lot of people want the, val the feature of Bitcoin, which is sound money. So how do you explain the fact that just a couple of days ago on the Bitcoin Cash Network, in a single day, it processed about five times more transactions in a single day on chain than the BTC network had ever processed on chain ever. And the transaction fees to do that were about 300 times lower than the average transaction fee on the BTC network at the moment. Was it? And, and thousands of times lower than the BTC transaction fees up in December of last year. Was it a stress test? That's what, yeah, th there were more than five times as many transactions so in a single day. So you have to realize- And the fees were hundreds I... of times lower. Please answer. <laughs> Sorry. You're repeating the same thing over okay. and over again. So answer, how was that possible when you just said it wasn't possible on BTC? So stress tests are not real world um, situations. So in, the reason why Bitcoin how fees... was it not a real world well, situation? The, real why Bitcoin, the reason why Bitcoin fees went up last year is because people competed to get onto the blockchain as soon as possible. So they tried to outbid each other. You, you left out part of the reason also. So there, There's congestion. Right. So there, there's two sides to this. So there's the, the people that want to use block space, and then there's the people that produce block space. The, peop, the, the amount of people that can tr compete to use the block space is anybody in the world. The amount of the people that produce the block space are the miners, but the miners were running software that limited the amount of block space they were allowed to produce. Whereas on the Bitcoin Cash Network, the amount of block space the miners are allowed to produce is not artificially limited. So I think that's a really, really big difference in regards to the fees. Do we do we agree that that's where the difference sure. in the fees? Sure, there are trade-offs for for having un, or not unlimited, but having 32 times the block size. What was the trade-off? The trade-off is- More fees on the bigger block size chain? And faster transactions is, and more reliable transactions? No, you make the, you lose decentralization. Do you? Yeah, you do. State why? So when, right now, for example, Ethereum, it's really hard for- I, Let's stick to Bitcoin, if you don't mind, so. Well, I'm talking, so let's- If you have an analogy, go, go for yeah. it. But. Right now on the Ethereum network, Ethereum has like a, a terabyte block size or something like that. I don't know the exact number. Right now on the Ethereum network, uh, it's hard for a user on a normal computer to run an Ethereum node because it's not able to keep up with the network. It okay. has to download so, many, so, so much data, has to process so much transactions. So normal users cannot run node or easily. So this is what hurts um, node decentralization. And by hurting node decentralization, it means that users have less power, less say in network upgrades. So is if, hurting minor decentralization also a problem? It is, it is. It's two different, it's kind of two, two separate things. Okay. Did you get a chance to check out my talk? After I did, started? I listened to it. Yeah, in so, fact, I'd love to talk to you about your talk once we're done with this, if, if you yeah, have time sure. and energy. So node decentralization hurts some part of Bitcoin. Sorry, node centralization hurts some part of Bitcoin okay. and that minor centralization hurts other parts of Bitcoin. So if, if I can ask you for one more clarification, yeah. is it the absolute number of nodes that's important or is it the percentage of users that are running their own full nodes that's important? So let's say we had 100 users in the world and 100 people, 100% 100 of those 100 users are running full nodes. So you have 100 full nodes in the world or let's say you have a billion users in the world. It's the percentage. It's, it's, percentage. it's the percentage that counts, not the total number? Correct. So if... Um, wow, I really see it differently. Really? Yeah. Like I can spin up a thousand nodes on AWS, but if there's no transactions using it, it's useless, right? So if a hundred people, only a hundred people use Bitcoin and everyone runs their own node, then it's that's a better, perfectly decentralized. That's a better system than a system with a billion people using Bitcoin, but there's, you know, a hundred thousand nodes in the world, which is a... It's hard to compare because a billion people using Bitcoin is actually better, right? You have more people yeah. using it. Yeah, and you have a hundred thousand of, nodes instead of a hundred nodes. If, so why you, if you're measuring decentralization as just uh, a measurement of what, how decentralized the network is. So, 10 of 10 or 100 of 100 is more decentralized than 100 so, of So I think maybe that's where we disagree. So I don't think we should measure the decentralization against the network itself. We should measure the decentralization against the entire world. And so I think a world in which 100,000 Bitcoin nodes exist is much more decentralized than a world in which 100 Bitcoin nodes exist with 100 people using them. Do you disagree? Yeah, I totally disagree. So, so you, you, 100,000 nodes with a million people using it is better 
because more people are using Bitcoin. And it's more decentralized term, because it's not more decentralized. If, if you look at it as the planet being what you're decentralizing along, right? Or within. No, it's not the, because not everyone is using Bitcoin. It, who cares about the people who aren't using Bitcoin? I think everybody should be using Bitcoin. I agree. And with one megabyte it's blocks, that isn't possible. We're arguing, if you agree, we're why arguing you, apples and oranges, right? If you agree, why did you create Litecoin? If you want everyone to be using Bitcoin, why did you create Litecoin? I see Litecoin as complementing Bitcoin. Okay. So I want everyone to use sound money, and Litecoin is also sound money. So let's go to the next one, and I, we'll get to that at the very end, because <laughs> that's exactly what your talk about was today, which I really enjoyed listening to. And I want to talk about it. So yeah. So let's get back to. I I still want to. Talk, I mean, like you want, to, 100... you want to look at the list together. This we're, we're like halfway through here. Okay. So so to recap where we're at so far before the video gets too long. So peer to peer electronic cash system. You seem to be on the fence whether or not that's a defining characteristic of Bitcoin. Uh, I still don't understand what's defining characteristics because if you say so here, if it's not that anymore, does that mean it's no longer Bitcoin? It's not. Right? I'm saying that there's no one single defining characteristic. Okay. I, I listed ten got of it, them. Got it. Sure. And 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 we yeah. can see what the and chart. And I can. I will argue that Bitcoin is still a peer-to-peer electronic cash system. Okay. Today. And low fee, you said, is not one of the defining characteristics. On-chain low fees is not. You keep misquoting oh. me. That's why we're clarifying. So so on-chain low fee transactions is not one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin, even though that was listed right there on Bitcoin.org. It wasn't listed. People go and check the Internet Archive, and you can you see Bitcoin.org. It's it, right there it, on the front page. It didn't say so. on-chain low fees, did it? There was nothing other than on-chain transactions. So there wasn't low fee transaction either. It said low fee on the so front page. So if it says transaction, does it mean it excludes everything that's multi-sig? I'd, I'd have to do more, some more digging into the multi-sig issue and when okay. that came about. I, it, I can't it wasn't, speak to that. It didn't but, exist until like 2012 okay. or 2000. And yeah. e- even if that's the case, low fee, there was nothing other than on-chain transactions at that time. Low fee transactions very clearly, I think were part of what defined Bitcoin because it was advertised right there, and we can agree to disagree on that front. Fast payments for on-chain transactions, I think were part of the defining characteristic of Bitcoin because it was listed right there on the front page of Bitcoin. In regards to on-chain transactions, you disagree that, that fast pay- payments is a defining characteristic of Bitcoin? Is, is that correct it, for it's, your position? It's one defining characteristic. That one is. Yeah. Okay, low fee there, is not, but it is. fast payment is. <laughs> for on, We're talking on-chain transactions from, from my point of view because on- that's, that's what Bitcoin was originally. Well, Bitcoin on chain was never fast, so it's ten minutes. Is that considered fast? So as someone, who, I guess for a compared to you like wire, it's fast. So as so, someone who set up, and I'm sure you remember BitcoinStore.com was a real turning point in the entire Bitcoin ecosystem, in which anybody could buy more than half a million consumer electronic products for Bitcoin and Bitcoin only. I'll tell you right now, accepting payments from all over the world, it was fast and it was great, and I was the biggest merchant in the entire world accepting Bitcoin for payments at that time. So. Sure. Like you're talking about zero confirmation, right? So I'm zero just... confirmation is fine for smaller okay. payments. For larger payments, you still want a confirmation. And so in regards to zero comp, that's actually the next one on my list, reliable payments, mm-hmm. right? So uh, do you think that the payments on BTC have been reliable, especially in December of last year? No. No. Do you think, because reliable payments were defined right there on Bitcoin.org as one of the characteristics of Bitcoin, do you agree that reliable payments is one of the characteristics it's that important. define Bitcoin? It's important. Well, if you I agree. It, we both agree it's important to, for a currency. Was it one of the defining characteristics that made Bitcoin Bitcoin? It was listed right on the front page of Bitcoin.org. I, it makes it an important. It's an important aspect of a currency. So okay. if a currency doesn't have reliable payments, then it's not a good currency. Okay. So Bitcoin. So was it one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin? Is my question for you. To me, if you if you watch my talk, I have four defining characteristics of Bitcoin. I, I have them in my notes. And those are the four, and I'm looking forward right. to talking to you so about the rest, each of those. So the rest are important, but they're not. Okay. I would say they're they're characteristics of Bitcoin, but they're not as important. So why don't we just we'll go over the last couple in my list, and then okay. we'll go over the ones in your list as well, and we'll we'll do that all together. So, um, so another thing that I say is one of the things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin is on chain scaling. Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin, right there was was talking about on-chain scaling. Do you agree that on-chain scaling is one of the characteristics that makes Bitcoin Bitcoin? Uh, what kind of scaling? On-chain scaling, increasing the block size and putting more transactions in the, in the in the blocks. Um, as outlined by Satoshi Nakamoto, the creator of Bitcoin himself. So he he said that if. Uh, if Bitcoin needs to scale, I'll, we'll I'll, just increase the block size. I'll, right? qu- I'll quote Satoshi Nakamoto, I think word for word. He says, the, the ultimate solution is just to allow the blocks to get as big as they need to be. 
Do you disagree or, dis, uh, or agree that that's one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin that was on-chain scaling? I disagree. I don't think... Um, not to... Can you tell us why you disagree? So, I mean, I don't... Don't, I don't know what Satoshi was thinking back then, um, but from what I from what I've learned over the years with Bitcoin, it's that on chain scaling works to a certain degree. So I think uh, two megabyte. I think like Segwit two X, for example. I think a two X increase in block size today won't hurt decentralization that much. Um, Segwit is already effectively two X increase, so I'm like Segwit and then two X. I think it's not too bad. Um, I think if you go much further than that, it's it's hard to figure out exactly at what point you start losing decentralization. And if you look, watch my talk, decentralization I think is what actually gives Bitcoin value. So at certain point you lose, and people disagree. Some developers think it's this. Some maybe economists think it's thirty two or. But there is there is a point where it starts to hurt decentralization. I think Satoshi Satoshi back then thought that Moore's law would. Um, keep going and it would it wouldn't run into this problem but okay. the fact is Moore's law hasn't c kept going and from empirical evidence we're seeing so, that so why, why do you think Moore's law hasn't kept going as someone who's been in you know the hardware side of tech for over you know almost two decades now uh, Moore's law very clearly has been a uh, it doesn't apply, it doesn't apply to everything right what is so, it not applied so to for Bitcoin there are various factors of um, and can, uh, I, can I ask someone to grab some waters for me and Charlie? We can keep rolling, but just, yeah, just some water. water so so for comments. Bitcoin... You have some water, but I don't. So. <laughs> you don't need water. <laughs> I, I need some water. Yeah. For, for Bitcoin, um, there's various things, <laughs> metrics that, that are important. So there's storage space. There's bandwidth. Yep, CPU, there's CPU, yeah. right? So, um, Thank you. For example, like I don't believe bandwidth increase in bandwidth has followed Moore's law, right? It's not, I mean, Moore's law is more mostly, mostly about CPU, right? Um, I think it's about the number of transistors. Yeah, so it's CPU. Size, yeah. uh, storage space, I think, has done well. Um, but bandwidth, I think, is a limiting factor. So if you can't process, if you can't transfer all these transactions to everyone, right? For, for a decentralized system to work, all the transactions has to reach everyone and everyone has to process those transactions. Okay and process the blocks. So, so to summarize what you're saying, so so Satoshi Nakamoto was very clearly, you know, said that allowing the blocks to get as big as they need to be is the ultimate solution. On-chain scaling, I'm saying it's one I, of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin, you're saying you, you disagree? I, di I disagree. Okay. I think from, from empirical evidence of the past like eight years, seven years. Okay, so I've you, you disagree that. with Satoshi Nakamoto in regards to the on-chain scaling. That's fine, you're sure. entitled to your opinion. and. Unless you really feel adamant about and want to elaborate on that point, I think, no, I think I'm, I I'm happy to move to the next already, one. Otherwise, we'll be here did, for, right. for eight hours. I mean, Satoshi Nakamoto is brilliant, but he he doesn't okay. see everything. Right. So, so another thing that I think is a defining characteristic of Bitcoin, because it was laid out by Satoshi Nakamoto himself, were uh, non-reversible payments or zero conf. Do you think that's one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin? Zero conf, zero confirmation is never non-reversible. So. So that's a no. No, I'm, I'm telling you as a matter of fact. Okay. I, Satoshi, I didn't ask you if it's possible. No, no, no. Satoshi not. never said zero confirmation is non-reversible. I mean, the definition of blockchain, the only reason why we have blockchain to 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 kind of solve the Byzantine general's problem is to fix the issue where reversible payments is not on a blockchain. So if a transaction is not on a blockchain, it's by definition reversible. Okay, so I, I can't quote Satoshi word for word, but I can generalize what he said was that uh, he said it was good enough. Exactly, good. He said within a couple of seconds you can have it be good enough. Yeah, um, because most nodes are not going to attack the network, and if and if most they, people aren't going to double spend anyhow. Correct, and most so. people won't double spend if a transaction is propagated to ninety nine percent of the network. It will likely go into the next block or a few blocks later. Okay, so most transactions are good, but the thing is, like the reason why it's good enough is because nobody will bother attacking it. Because if the transaction, if you're buying a coffee, no one's no one will bother reversing that transaction. Okay. But if you're paying someone a million dollars or a bank to bank transfer, so, so for example, just just to summarize here, my, my question is: Is non-reversible payments one of the defining characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin? It is. It is. But not zero comp. Non-reversible means a confirmed one transaction. Okay. Okay. Right? So a confirmed transaction will be prohibitively hard okay, that's to fine. reverse because of the amount of work. Because of. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Um, another one that's on my list of defining things that make Bitcoin Bitcoin or give Bitcoin its Bitcoin-ness 
uh, and this is pulled right from the original Bitcoin white papers, that Bitcoin is a chain of digital signatures. Yeah. Agree? We agree on that one. Easy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Travis. That's, that's the easiest one yet. So we agree on that one. Sure. Um, another one that I say are, uh, is a defining characteristic to make Bitcoin Bitcoin are uh, the opcodes, the original opcodes being enabled. Uh, do we agree or disagree that the opcodes are one of the defining characteristics that make Bitcoin Bitcoin? I disagree. Disagree. Okay. Care to elaborate why you disagree? I mean, that's straight I mean, from Satoshi the, himself and the design of Bitcoin. Mean, I mean, the opcodes, there could be an opcode that doesn't really do much. And then if you remove that, does that make that not Bitcoin anymore? All right. So Satoshi himself disabled a lot of the opcodes because they were potentially, um, they may have potential bugs in it. And if the reason, the main reason I see why you would do that is because you don't want some opcode, some com smart contract opcodes to uh, to kind of uh, cause money losing bugs, right? So if you want Bitcoin to be okay. sound money, you have to make sure that it, it is actually sound money. So it sounds like we disagree on whether or not the opcodes being enabled Correct. is and, one of the defining having, characteristics. And having a lot of different Bitcoin opcodes Bitcoin. that are very powerful increases the attack surface okay. of Bitcoin. And that's why that's why he removed okay. it or disabled it in the first Fair place. Enough. I think I have another one that we're going to agree on easily. I think I have a... Uh, actually two that we're going to agree on really easily so SHA-256 one CPU one vote is that one of the defining characteristics of are Bitcoin? Are you sure we're going to agree on this easily? You tell me I think so. SHA-256 mining is not a defining characteristic. It's not. It's not. Even though it's right there in the original Bitcoin white paper sure. saying that's it's how it because works. of what it was using back then. Okay. Right? So so SHA-256 so, okay that's fine I, I'm surprised that, that we don't agree on that one. We don't agree on that. Okay. You know why? Tell me why. If I'm, I'm shocked, to be honest, that we don't agree really? on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was going to if SHA-256 got broken tomorrow... Okay. You're, if SHA-256 was broken tomorrow, we'd all agree to switch to something. Okay. Right. So great point, Charlie. Is that no longer Bitcoin? It's a great point, Charlie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, SHA-256 isn't broken today, but you're that, that that's a very interesting point. Yeah, so back then... And I'll have uh, to give that some more thought. Back so. then, Satoshi chose SHA-256. It's in the white paper because it's what he decided to okay. use. But it doesn't make Bitcoin Bitcoin. Okay. I think you've made a very, very compelling point. Script that, doesn't make Litecoin Litecoin. Okay. I think you've made a compelling point right. on, on that front. Okay. So, and and uh, I'll want to think about it a little bit more, but I, I may be uh, able to concede that one to you there. So, wow. Excellent point. So, <laughs> um, which shows like you're, you're, you're no, you're, you're absolutely right. If, if SHA 256 were to break tomorrow, everybody would switch to something else right away. You're absolutely right about that. And everybody would still call that new coin uh, Bitcoin. It wouldn't be a new coin. And, 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 and I, I think you're probably even right. It, it wouldn't be fair to call that. A new coin it would just still be the the, the bitcoin but right. with a different proof of work and then i want to also Fantastic talk about point. the one cpu one vote okay so do we agree or disagree on that one okay so this is a complicated topic. or one hash one vote is maybe a better way of putting it but the quote from the white paper was one cpu one vote yeah so the the thing i want to elaborate a little bit about that is when he when satoshi wrote the white paper a miner and a user were the same thing Miners were users, users were miners. Because miners, users run it on board. a CPU. Yep. CPU was mining Bitcoin. So over time, those two sets of people actually split, right? There are people running nodes that are using Bitcoin and there are people mining Bitcoin. Yep. So there's two types of voting. One is miner voting, so hash rate voting. So that's one CPU, one vote. And the other type of voting is um, consensus voting whether people agree that this blockchain created by miners fits the consensus. And that's effectively done by users and nodes. So one CPU, one vote is for uh, miners. miners. And I guess users also, but one computer, one node, one vote. So I'm talking about like- One node, one vote? I'm talking about, um, it's not exactly one node, one vote, but amount of uh, economic transactions gets power, right? So if like, if, Coinbase, right, does a lot of transactions on the Bitcoin network. They have a lot of economic power. Yep. So they represent their users. But if they want the network to upgrade a certain way, they have a lot of power to do that. So users can obviously... They have a lot disagree. of economic power rather than hashing power. Correct. Okay. Economic power. And that's not really described, explained that much in the Satoshi White Paper. So in, in my list here, I, I had SHA-256-1 CPU-1 vote is one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin. I think you've convinced me that uh, if there was a, a flaw found with SHA-256 and the entire ecosystem moved to something else, um, 
it would no longer be one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin. So uh, I think you've convinced me on that. Um, another one here that, just like the last one, I thought we were going to agree on. Let's see. So longest chain with the most proof of work. Do we agree that that's one of the defining characteristics of Bitcoin? Originating from the Genesis block, of course. And that's defined right there in the original Bitcoin white paper. Uh, longest chain, most proof of work is... I'm trying to think. Would that... So, like... Yes and no. I think like if if miners decide to attack, right? Let's say this extreme situation where miners decide to attack Bitcoin by increasing the block rewards, for example, from right now it's twelve point five to back to fifty because they're greedy. They want to make more money. If they actually decide to, there's no incentive for them to do that because they, it hurts their investment or it hurts Bitcoin. But if they actually decide to do that, what would happen? What actually would happen is users would revolt and say that's not Bitcoin, right? But even though they would extend the longest chain, that's no longer the Bitcoin that everyone... So, so sometimes it's the longest chain with the most proof of work, is, is your reply? The longest chain with the most proof of work would define Bitcoin... for a given consensus, right? Unless the consensus change, right? So if miners decide to change the consensus, by increasing the block rewards, the longest chain and most proof of work does not matter anymore because we're comparing apples and oranges. Does that make sense? So I think we've gotten through my list of things here and we'll put the picture on the screen for everybody to see here. And so I'll share with Charlie right here. So in 2011, all of these things that I said were defining characteristics of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, BTC had all of them. Charlie, I think, disagreed on roughly two thirds, and maybe agreed on about a third of those with some caveats. Well, no, Is that... no, no, Bitcoin had them. It's no, 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 no. Of, of the of them being defining characteristics of Bitcoin. Sure. sure. Um, we we I think we're in a hundred percent agreement that Bitcoin had all the things that I listed sure, sure, there, sure. and we agree on maybe a third of them being defining characteristics of what made Bitcoin Bitcoin. Um, if we go to my next slide here, we have things that made Bitcoin popular, which are from the same list. I said being peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash, low fee, fast payments, reliable payments, and non-reversible payments. Those are the things that made Bitcoin popular. Do we agree that those were things that made Bitcoin popular? And sure. BTC had all of those in 2011. And the part that really is upsetting to me is here we have BTC in 2018, and I'm saying it has none of those characteristics. It's no longer a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. In fact, many of the BTC proponents are hostile to the idea of using it as cash. Do, do we agree on that? That many uh, people are hostile to using Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system? What do you mean by hostile? They say buying coffee with Bitcoin is stupid. Mm, they say buying coffee with Bitcoin on-chain is stupid. Okay, so they're, right. they're hostile so, to making on-chain transactions to use Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer. People are working -peer. on Lightning Network, which helps, helps Bitcoin scale to second-layer solutions. So it's still Bitcoin. Right, so they're not hostile to using. Is it Bitcoin. a peer-to-peer -peer cash system when you're using the Lightning Network? Sure, it's actually more peer-to-peer -peer than Bitcoin. I disagree. Okay, so tell me why you think it's more peer-to-peer -peer when I have to connect to my Lightning node to yours, to his, to his, to make no, the payment. No, because you're over connecting there. in a network. It's uh, the transactions are jumping from peer to peer. So Bitcoin transactions are not peer to peer right now. Right, so Bitcoin transactions are a broadcast type transaction where you broadcast the transaction to everyone in the world. The whole, the whole network is. And then yep. the Miners put it in a block and then put in a block. So yep. it's a broadcast transaction. It's not yeah. peer to peer. The but the, pa network, the payment itself is from person to person, right? Because there's one blockchain that's shared by everybody. Sure. I update the ledger and to reflect that my Bitcoin went not, from my address to your address, yeah, yeah. So from me to you. The payment, Whereas on Lightning Network, it goes the through a bunch of hops. Well, the I was payment, explaining what I had to The say. payment for Bitcoin right now is from a sender to a recipient. Mm -hmm. It's not peer to peer per se. Peer to peer means it's. Isn't a, sender to recipient peer to peer? Um, it's just a direct. Payment, right? Yeah, direct payment. Yeah, direct payments sound pretty pretty convenient. So peer to peer Are, network means that it's you're connecting okay. to a peer who connects to another peer who connects to another peer. That's one way to okay. define a peer to peer network. So I mean, it's just definition. Okay. So 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 Bitcoin on chain payments are direct payments. We agree on that. Um. Yeah, I guess. Are, are Lightning Network payments direct payments? Yeah. Even if there's a bunch of hops in between and with channel states and sure, if it's confirmed, if it gets. Um, so confirmed, did, then it's direct payment. You're, you're if, it, if it gets confirmed. So did you see there was a, a picture on Twitter floating around that showed somebody named their lightning node Roger Veer and none of the other lightning nodes were connecting to it. Did you see that photo? Do you <laughs> no. know the one I'm talking about? No. 
And they were all laughing and, and joking around about it and so happy about it. But to me, I thought, my God, do you people not understand what you're laughing and joking about? You're laughing and joking about the fact that the Lightning Network has the ability to exclude people from being able to use it. Whereas the on-chain Bitcoin network, it's impossible to exclude anybody from using it. You can't exclude anybody from using Lightning Network. You, if you people refuse to connect to your node, you absolutely can. You, you think it, like, okay, and you're, it's, you're telling me that everybody in this world that uses Bitcoin refuses to make a connection to you. That's what the picture was showing on the actual live Lightning Network network. That's just as ridiculous as saying all the miners will censor your transaction because they know it's you. Well, this this isn't theoretical. This actually happened. This is a live picture from the Bitcoin Lightning Network network. <laughs> That's somebody, because somebody created a node with your name and yeah. decided not to connect to anyone, and then there you created go. This picture. It's not because he was censored from connecting to Lightning. If network. everybody refuses to connect to a particular node, that node has been censored from participating on no the network. No one would know no? that's you unless until, you call yourself Roger Veer. Until and the regulators don't like come you. in, because if you look at the Lightning nodes, are the very definition of a money transmitter. They're taking money from one person and then sending it on to somebody else. We're already seeing how much pressure is coming from governments on exchanges and wallets. And I'm sure you saw firsthand at Coinbase the craziness that was going on with yeah, regulators sure. at Coinbase. You think they're not going to do that to Lightning Network node operators? They won't be able to, just like they won't be able to shut down Bitcoin. Because Why would they not be anyone, able to do it to a Lightning Network? Anyone can spin up a Lightning Network now. Anybody can spin up whatever business they want to, right? No, but Lightning Network is, is private, right? If I spin up a node and open connections to two people, no one knows who I am. I'm, I'm, they can't censor me. They I'm, can't stop I me. hope you're right, but I, I suspect you're wrong. So. What, what do you mean? I mean, give me a solid reason why you think we've, I'm wrong. We've, we've already seen the picture of a bunch of nodes refusing to connect to so-and-so, right? There's no... I mean, the, pic, the picture is a joke. It, but it was a picture from the actual network, right? So it was a, it was a graphical representation of the actual Yeah, it's state because someone network. made a joke on you by creating a Lightning Network node called Roger Veer and decided to So and they not successfully censored you. somebody from participating No, he in censored network. himself. What if, I named, what if that node was me? How do you know it wasn't me? Okay, if it was you and people decide to censor you because of your name, then I think you all should... these on-chain transactions on Bitcoin Cash is what I would do if that were the case. Or you should not so. be. You should be. You should be an anonymous like you never know, because that's what Even better, Bitcoin that's, is I'm all about, right? I I think uh, fungibility is incredibly important. So I, we can agree on that. So anyhow, we have Bitcoin BTC here in 2018. No longer low fee. Do we agree it's no longer low fee? This is, these are this is a list of things that made Bitcoin popular to begin 2017, with. 2017, I would agree. 2018. It is no longer low fee. 2018, the fees are back to pretty same amount. So I, we just, one of these guys was demoing his product to me that he said he's going to switch over to Bitcoin Cash from BTC just half an hour ago. He made an on-chain BTC transaction. It was 47 cents in fees. Is that low fee? Yeah, that's pretty low fee. We disagree. Fast payments. Well, I mean, if you want lower fees than that, use Lightning Note. I'll so, just use Bitcoin Cash. Thank you very much. Well, because Bitcoin Cash has a different... I have a Bitcoin Cash Bitcoin. wallet on my phone. It's impossible to install Lightning Network on my phone. So if you want to use cryptocurrencies today, Bitcoin are you, are you Cash talking is... talking to the camera? Of course I am. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the camera now. <laughs> right? I'm, yeah. a, I'm good at infomercials. Yeah. Yeah. Try your Bitcoin Cash wallet today. Bitcoin.com. Go to free.bitcoin.com. Your audience probably and get some already free realized Bitcoin that. Cash. So. Probably. So, so. I'm, I'm a natural marketer. So thank you for tolerating that, Charlie. So, um, Fast payments, right? Does Bitcoin have fast payments today? Uh... Lightning Network is very fast. Um, Again, there's no Lightning Network from, wallet available for my phone. I can't make if I wanted to go to a place and pay with the Lightning well, Network. It's, it's I'll not tell possible. you what happened. So Bitcoin um, got too popular too fast. So thanks to people like me promoting it. Yeah, and, and no one's complaining, right? And the price went up. Shut I'm up. complaining. I'm pretty mad. <laughs> the price shot up too too fast. Also, now it's correcting. So what 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 happens when that when that happens is that people get, move to altcoins. We saw that happen. Sure, and you get you get congestion. It's kind of like if you're if you open a restaurant business and then it got popular too fast, then you have congestion, right? So is that so a bad thing? So what do you do? You, you expand, add more seats. Yeah, right? you expand. That's right. What do you, do you? And you expand as quickly as you possibly okay, can to make. There's room two for ways to expand. Yeah. One is to just add twice twice the number of tables and have everyone sit really conge really crowded and have a bad experience. That's one way to do it. The other is to actually just expand to the next door shop, right? And that takes time. And that's like building a Lightning Network. It takes time to expand um, to a second layer or to another, another, another open space where you can add more seats, right? So if you choose to expand by adding more tables and have everyone had a bad time, that's not really a good solution, right? So in the meantime, 
you're crowded. People, yes, people will not go to your restaurant and go to an alternative restaurant, right? But you want to build it out the right way. An alternative restaurant like Light Restaurant right next door? Yeah. Litecoin? Sure. So or it seems awfully convenient Monero. for you to have been telling everybody, no, 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 don't raise the block size on Bitcoin, just use Litecoin. And I, I recall very specifically you said if the blocks ever became full on Litecoin, you would just raise the block size. And to me, that looks like just a fantastic marketing ploy on your point part to tell everybody, don't use Bitcoin, use Litecoin, restrict the Bitcoin network from being able to scale for people to use it and come use Litecoin. Well, fantastic if, marketing, Charlie, for well, Litecoin. Let me ask you something, okay? If that's, if that's my plan, why did I promote SegWit so hard? I have no idea. Well, think about it. If, if I wanted Bitcoin to stay um, congested and useless for payments and I want everyone to move to Litecoin, why did I help Bitcoin get SegWit and Lightning Network, right? It's because I actually, my L- Lightning Network not... has done nothing to alleviate scaling as of today. And uh, it has. SegWit's okay. done very, very, it has. very, very So a lot little. of people are using Lightning Network today. And the good thing is how you many... actually don't know how many people are using Lightning Network. That's true. But I, I hate good, to do this right? to you, Charlie. It's good that people don't know. Yeah. But I hate to do this to you, Charlie. I did it to Samsung last time. How many shops are accepting Lightning Network payments? How many stores can I spend Lightning Network payments on online today? A dozen, maybe. Can you name some for me? Um, you can go to the sticker shop. There's like the bit refill. Um, there are some clothing shops that have lightning. So I've heard there's... two, and then some clothing shops. Are you yeah. sure? So maybe three. I mean, uh, there's, also, last... there's when... also like the some um, like the uh, what's it called the the million dollar pixel thing. Uh, the lightning uh, oh. Satoshi's place, right? So that's, like not, that. that's not really a store where you can buy things. You can, you well, can just it's, paint a picture of, yeah. of mainly uh, if it's valuable, male genitalia if you have been to that website. If so. it's valuable to people to spend their money that way, then people... It's, it's a, it's so a I, I heard of, two, maybe three, where you can actually buy products and then a third one where you can paint pictures of male genitalia using the lightning network. Is that an accurate summary of the state of the lightning network at this part point? Right, you've been to what Satoshi's place it was called, right? Like I went there, all I saw were people drawing pictures of male genitalia. I imagine you saw that as well. If you go That's there now, the it's probably not there. But uh, I haven't been there recently. I, I went once, and that was enough. Well, it's freedom of money. Right? Okay, you can do whatever you want. You can draw whatever you want, and no one can block you. And okay. that's the beauty of Bitcoin. You right? can draw your male genitalia Agreed? with a light network. I, yeah. I think nobody, be, nobody being able to block you is part of the beauty of Bitcoin. So I have a question for you, since you're here promoting Lightning Network really, really hard. When was the last time you made a purchase with Lightning Network and bought something? Uh, just like a week ago. What did you buy? Bought some stickers from the blockchain store. Yeah. So how many times did you have to try to make the payment before it went through? It went through right away. The very first time? Yeah. Because there's another great video I had with a guy in Hong Kong. I told him if it goes through, I'll wear a Blockstream shirt and you can take photos with me. And if it doesn't go through, you can wear a Bitcoin Cash shirt. And uh, he tried. Payment failed. Yeah, but you know, like this is, is work that, in, this is work in progress, right? Yeah. I think so. It's not. So you agree, it's not ready yet. It's not ready. Yet. Not even close to ready yet, right? Uh, it might be ready end of the year. I mean, ready, like right now. Eighteen it's, months, it's maybe. Good for, no, it's not going to take that long. Right be less than eighteen months. Yeah. Would you like to take a bet with me on that? A bet. I'll bet. That. I'll bet you that in eighteen months from now, there will be less than a thousand merchants in the world accepting Lightning Network payments for for physical goods. For how much? How much you want to bet? A friendly bet. Yeah, a thousand dollars is friendly, right? No, I don't like to bet money. I have a better idea. If I'm right, you can wear a Bitcoin Cash shirt, and we'll do a little video about how what happened in the, in the, in the next 18 months. And if uh, if if I'm wrong, and there's more than a thousand shops accepting Lightning Network, I'll wear a Lightning Network Blockstream shirt or whatever shirt you want, and we can talk about how I was wrong. Lightning Network was ready and got rolled out to more than a thousand merchants in 18 months. From sure, today. I'll make a video saying I was wrong, and if you're wrong, you'll make a video saying yeah, you're wrong. You got it. You got it. Sure. Thank you, Charlie. Yeah. 18 months today is what September 8th or so so Did you? well September 9th we'll have to set a reminder so one of us will be wearing an interesting shirt and be giving a mea culpa in 18 months from now in regards to Lightning Network and in all honesty I hope I'm the one that's wrong uh, I really do because if we have fast irreversible payments for the entire world that are super cheap that's exactly what I want so I I, I totally hope I lose this bet but I think it's unlikely that I'm really lose, well. You know, like, but a, I hope I do. I, I, a my payment heart processor hope I do. announced just a couple of days ago that they're going to support Lightning Network for okay. all their merchants. So I, I hope they get a thousand uh, merchants online within eighteen months. I, I hope they do, and I'll gladly make the video saying I was wrong. And in my heart of hearts, I hope I am wrong because my entire goal for being involved in cryptocurrencies is I want people to be able to have peer-to-peer electronic cash that doesn't require permission from anybody that are lightning fast and super cheap for everybody. That's why I'm here. So yeah, and. 
I what, mean, what, what excited you so much about cryptocurrencies, actually? So that, that's why I'm involved. I want to bring peer-to-peer permissionless cash for the entire world to undermine government's ability to control peaceful people. For me, what motivated it's you, um, sound money. So I saw Bitcoin as uh, really a better version of money than what we've, we've seen in the history of mankind. So we've seen gold, uh, but there, gold has issues, right? Gold's physical, and although it's, it's not exactly censorship resistant because um, in order to send gold, you have to use, you have to transport it. If you fly with gold, you have to declare, right? So it's not, with Bitcoin, you don't have to, you can, it's censorship resistant. So in my talk, the four points I made that makes Bitcoin- Do I have them right? Yeah. Okay, I have them up here. We'll put it on the screen for everybody else to see. That makes Bitcoin. Bitcoin is censorship resistance, transaction immutability, cost of production, and fixed money supply. So, so let's talk for, about those one at a time. For each of these four, I can tell you like what what's the value, right? Well, so for censorship resistant, it means can, that can we start at the very top. So you say Bitcoin's intrinsic value. Can you define what you mean by intrinsic value? Yeah, it means that it, this gives Bitcoin value, like it, it, intrinsically. There's no. It just it just makes Bitcoin valuable as and because Bitcoin is sound this gives this makes Bitcoin sound money and being sound money is valuable. What what else has intrinsic value? Some people will argue gold has intrinsic value. Do, do you um, think gold has intrinsic value? I think so. Can you tell me why? Why are we talking about gold? Well, Bitcoin is supposed to be digital gold according to the BTC camp, right? Yeah. So what what gives gold intrinsic value? Gold. I mean gold. Uh. Just in the history of, of mankind or humankind, um, people have valued like shiny stuff that is limited in quantity so that you can't just create uh, more gold, right? There's talk, you can't just create fake gold, you can't create, create gold out thin air. So having limited quantity of something that is desirable because of gold's shininess makes gold valuable. So uh, that's the intrinsic value of gold. So your whole talk today was on like the economic characteristics of Bitcoin's intrinsic value. Is that right? Sure. Do you have a background in economics? Uh, I didn't study economics. Okay. Is that what you mean? It's not, well, about, it's not about economics, I'm, right? It's, it's just not, about intrinsic okay. value. So intrinsic value is, I think, an economic term, no? I'm, I'm, I guess I'm curious. It's a where, financial term. Did you think up the, these reasons by yourself or did you like, how did you come to these conclusions that Bitcoin's intrinsic value is well, from censorship resistance, transaction immutability, Cost, product, uh, cost of production and a fixed money supply. So I'll explain it this way, right? So censorship resistance gives you something that cannot be blocked from spending, from sending. Transaction immutability gives you something that cannot be reversed or taken away. Cost of production gives you something that cannot be counterfeited, right? It costs something to create another one. And fixed money supply means that it's something that cannot be devalued. So you have a new form of money that cannot be blocked from spending, cannot be reversed or taken away, cannot be counterfeited, and cannot be devalued. These four properties of money makes it very valuable because we've never had intrinsically. Like this. Yeah, because if you have a Bitcoin, you have these these four properties. You have a Bitcoin; it's stored in the blockchain, right? It's somewhere confirmed, so no one can take it from you by reversing the transaction. No one can devalue your coin. No one can create Bitcoin for cheap, which devalues your coin. Right? So, Nobody so Charlie, can... if, I, if I can interrupt here, if that's okay, mm -hmm. I think you basically have no clue what you're talking about. And I'll tell you why, politely. So I, and I will argue that Bitcoin has no intrinsic value whatsoever. Okay. And I'll give you a reason why. The value of Bitcoin is in the mind of the person that owns or is using the Bitcoin. It's not in the Bitcoin itself. If there were no human beings on the earth to value Bitcoin or to value gold, that gold or that Bitcoin would have no value whatsoever. So the value, there's no such thing as intrinsic value. The value. So nothing in, has intrinsic value. That's right. right. Nothing has. Well, then intrinsic you're just value. redefining intrinsic value. We just clear. You just clarified that it's in the Bitcoin itself or it's in the gold itself. No, the value is With in the mind of two people. Right. The value I mean, is in the mind of the Everything I talk the about is respect to people. If people don't okay. exist, it doesn't matter what I say. Exactly right. So yeah, the value so, the value is in the mind of the beholder, not in the object itself. But you listed off here a bunch of things that give Bitcoin its intrinsic value. And another one that I really just was shocked and to be honest, I'm embarrassed on your behalf that you had it up there saying that the cost of production gives Bitcoin its intrinsic value. Have you been reading Karl Marx recently? No, why? 
have you, have you ever read Karl Marx? I read a bit of it, but... Okay, have you heard of the labor theory of value? Sure. Can you tell us about that, please? Well, why don't you tell me about it? Well, you had it right here in your slide in regards to the cost of production. You're saying the fact that Bitcoin takes effort to produce gives it its value. Is that what you're saying here with the cost of production? So what I'm saying is, that, well, if you actually uh, looked at or listened to my talk, you would see that... I listened to every word of your talk. I the cost of production, there's a few things, right? One is you can't have... It's easy to detect counterfeit Bitcoin. Um, so if someone's so watching, I, I think one of the slides specifically is that it costs just under four thousand dollars to produce a, a Bitcoin. Is that right? That was in your slide. Can I finish? So the second part of that is that um, you can't create extra Bitcoins, right? So if a transaction, a block has twelve point five Bitcoins. Miners can't just say I want to create forty Bitcoins or fifty Bitcoins. And the third part of that is that there is a cost to create a Bitcoin, right? Right now. The cost is from March. Someone calculated it to be four thousand dollars to create a Bitcoin. So the reason why that's valuable is because if it costs nothing to create a Bitcoin, then Bitcoins will be created for nothing and it will devalue your so you, your you, coins. You, you right? just dug your hole deeper. No. So the cost of producing something has absolutely nothing to do with its value, right? So if I were to bake a mud pie and spend an hour baking a mud pie... I didn't say it has something to do with the value. I said it has something to do with the intrinsic value. So Bitcoin's intrinsic value. We just yes. remember the fact that there's no such thing as intrinsic value and the value is in the mind of the beholder. Sure. So that leaves us with Bitcoin's, Bitcoin's value. value in the mind of the beholder. Okay. Has a... Does it have to do with the cost of production? It... It's one of the four reasons I stated. So you're a fan of Karl Marx's labor theory of value? No, because that's exactly what you're promoting here. So uh, I'll explain Karl Marx's labor theory of value because I've read Das Kapital from cover to cover. I'm not a fan of Marx, but I understood the arguments that he was making. He basically argues that the amount I, of effort that I goes into creating something. I don't agree, something, right? So like if you just spend effort to do something, that doesn't automatically give it value, right? The right. Value, so why was that in your presentation today? It gives it intrinsic value. We just went over that, that there's no such thing as intrinsic value. The value is in the okay, mind of the beholder, not in the object itself. And in regards to the cost of production, right? If I go and spend an hour making so mud pies, the point that doesn't get their value because I spent an hour making them. If I make an hour, spend an hour making apple pies, the apple pies are valuable not because I spent an hour making them, but because people enjoy apple pie. People don't enjoy mud pies. So even if I spent an hour making apple pies or mud pies, the apple pies have value. Okay, the mud pies don't. Okay, so you have a pie in front of you. Mm -hmm. It costs some money, right? It's worth something to you. Depends on if it's a mud pie or okay, an apple whatever, pie. Whatever right? pie you like, right? What do you like? Apple pie sounds okay, nice. Apple pie. It's worth something to you, right? If you have a um, device, like a Star Trek device, that can create infinite amount of apple pies with no cost, right? Would that apple pie cost just as much to you anymore? So the price of everything or the value is set by supply and demand. Sure. So your, your Star Trek replicator would increase the supply and the demand wouldn't necessarily change. Yeah. So if you've increased the supply and the demand stays Correct. the same, the price exactly. comes down. Exactly. If you if you increase the so demand and the supply was, stays the same, then the price goes up. Yeah. And my point from that is that because it costs money to create another apple pie, you can't. It, there's value that cannot be so destroyed what, from someone just creating an infinite amount of apple pies. What you should have said, then to be clear, is that the supply is limited, which is totally different than your slide says the cost of production. So is the supply being limited? That helps Bitcoin have a price because the price of everything is set by supply and demand. So if the supply is limited. Okay, my argument is not perfect, okay. right? I may be, I may need to refine it a bit. I think and you're understanding that your argument of, is not perfect. Your argument is laughably sad to anybody that studied economics. The cost of production has absolutely nothing to do with the value of a good. Absolutely nothing to do with it. I didn't say it has something to do with the value of the good. It's right here in your slide, and we'll it put has it here for everybody to see. Intrinsic value. Of Bitcoin. So you think that Bitcoin still has an intrinsic value? Yes, by definition, then most people agree with intrinsic value. I think I mean, you should pick up a dictionary and look up the word of intrinsic, and the value is in the mind of the beholder, not in the in the object itself. Okay, so I mean, we disagree on the definition because if you look up intrinsic value for stock, is there intrinsic value in stock? The value is in the mind of the beholder, is not there in the object intrinsic itself. Value no, in stock? there is no such thing as then intrinsic value. We can't value. argue because we don't agree on definition. We don't agree on the assumptions, and we can't. So argue that's about a, the that's you know one of the fundamental right? you know tenets of Austrian economics is the value is in the mind of the beholder, not in the object okay. itself. Okay. So, any other topics you want to cover, or is that a good good place to wrap it up? Um, I don't know. I think we went for more than our half hour. How much time do we have? There's been 
It's been a while, right? It's been about yeah. an hour. It's been yeah. about an hour. Maybe we'll do part two. I do like in talking to you. So I, and I enjoy talking with you too, Charlie. Like you are a smart guy, but you got it completely wrong on the economics here and then the economics of Bitcoin, like totally wrong. And that's why you have like some of the biggest promoters in the entire history of Bitcoin. Now I'm busy promoting the real Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. And I wish the BTC people good luck. I wish Lightning, Litecoin good luck. I wish the Lightning Network good luck. I wish anybody that's building systems to bring more economic freedom to the world Good luck with their projects, and I'll be supportive of those projects. But uh, the BTC camp went off in the wrong direction and destroyed can their I, first mover advantage. Can I ask you something? Go for it. So um, you're upset when people call Bitcoin Cash Bcash, right? I'm annoyed by it. I think it's rude, yeah. Yet you call Bitcoin Bitcoin Core. Isn't that a hypocrite? So I've been calling, trying to make a clear distinction that there's Bitcoin Core and Bitcoin Cash. And I think Bitcoin Cash has more Bitcoinness about it than Bitcoin Core does at this point. I, I mean, I, I do, I respect what you think. Okay. But I think... I'm glad your brother both does too. So. Yeah, I think, I mean, I don't agree with whatever, everything yeah. Bobby says. Or does. Obviously not. I'm not, so. I'm not my brother's keeper, I sure. say. No. Um, I think he told me once that you guys aren't allowed to discuss Bitcoin Cash at family gatherings. So. <laughs> um, you mean Bcash? That could be the one. I think that I think that may be what you said. I think Bobby said Bitcoin Cash. So, um, so my point is, I think my advice to you is that if you are really upset about people calling it Bcash, you shouldn't call Bitcoin Bitcoin Core, right? So what They're, should I? I'll just call it BTC from now on. Is that call a it better Bitcoin. option? Well, Bitcoin Cash is the Bitcoin based on a but list still, of criteria that I it gave. It doesn't very matter. Clearly. It's still Bitcoin Cash today. If you ask a thousand people, yeah. 999 will say Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin Cash. So it's not Bitcoin. So if I asked a thousand people in 2011 what they thought of Bitcoin, they'd say that sounds stupid. But I didn't give up. I was persistent. And sure. here we are today. Digital currencies are changing the world. And being persistent yeah. is how you change the world and get things done. And I plan but to do the same. But it's confusing. Okay. Yeah. And the so confusion was caused by a bunch of people that hijacked the BTC project okay. and changed so, what it was and then just wanted to keep the same name. Let me, let me just make my point. So... If you keep calling Bitcoin Bitcoin Core, you shouldn't be upset that people call Bitcoin Cash be Cash. You really don't see the difference between the two? No. No? No. Okay. There's absolutely we'll, no difference we'll between let, the two. We'll let the viewers you decide. Know, you know why? So. Because you are trying to create less confusion, right, by calling Bitcoin Bitcoin Core. And that I understand that. And people so do you calling, think people calling Bitcoin Cash be Cash are trying to create more or less confusion? Less confusion. Do you really? Yeah. Do you, I, do you agree I with use, me that I there use was a... Bcash because okay. for one, Bitcoin Cash is hard to say, and for two, it's very confusing. Bitcoin Cash doesn't seem very hard to say, but but do, do you agree that there was an orchestrated attempt to try and change the name of Bitcoin Cash to Bcash and drive new people to the crypto coin ecosystem to forums promoting Bitcoin Cash as Bcash rather than calling it Bitcoin Cash? Do I see a... Have you read the article by Donald Fukball that said, so the reason people call Bitcoin Cash Bcash will shock you. Have you seen that article? I think Bitcoin people call Bitcoin Cash Bcash because they don't want the brand confusion. They don't want people to get confused, to get misled into thinking that Bitcoin Cash is Bitcoin. So to buy the... Bitcoin Cash. To try to buy Bitcoin and then accidentally bought Bitcoin Cash. So I think... So I gave a very compelling list, if I do say so myself, of the defining characteristics that I think make Bitcoin Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash has eight of the ten, or nine of the ten. Bitcoin BTC has a uh, two of the ten, or one of the ten. Yeah, but left. you know, like so, before, if, like June expected. June of last year, out of your ten list, Litecoin fills nine of them. So is Litecoin then Bitcoin? Litecoin didn't originate with the same genesis block yeah, that's as everything one that's else. Wrong. That's an incredibly important one. That's that's the most important one. I think that's an incredibly but it's important just one. one. I didn't say it's the only one. One of ten. I, right, so Litecoin. I think last that's year, that's one that's probably required. Period, and the other ones are a bit more flexible. I'll tell you why that's not required. Tell me. So, if something happens in terms of cryptography that causes a situation where we have to start a new chain, right? Bitcoin. So out, out, chain. outside of an emergency of something not, breaking, not outside breaking. Of emergency, not outside of emergency. For example, like. You've heard of Wimbo Wimbo technology, mm -hmm. Wimbo Wimbo technology, right? It's a really cool, like, privacy scaling uh, blockchain. If Bitcoin community decide that they want to upgrade to this better blockchain technology, it requires a whole separate chain. You can't attach 
the member one would change to the current to team. the current chain. So if that does happen, that's very unlikely that will happen. But if that does happen, that is still Bitcoin. Don't you think it would be better for them just to just start their own chain? Oh, they are working on their own chain. Yeah. But I'm just saying, imagine a scenario so, where... So hold on. Do you think it's better that they are starting their own chain rather than trying to get everybody... In, on, in all honesty, if, if Mimblewimble is actually um, better than Bitcoin in all aspects, I would hope our community can, come, can decide to actually upgrade to a better technology that has no compromise. Assuming it's better on, in all aspects. Right. So I, I think we're kind of a little bit off track with that. So sure. if, if something's obviously better, I think people will switch voluntarily and, and that's just fine. And I'd like to see, and you probably like to see people switch and upgrade the current system and bring along the same value, right? You don't want to see a new system. That's what online. frustrated me so much about Bitcoin's stagnation and sure. intentionally causing sure. a bunch of economic nonsense to happen to drive the most passionate supporters of Bitcoin to other altcoins. Uh, that's been incredibly frustrating for me. So I just and if, if of... I can summarize a little bit too, the part that makes me so mad is that the BTC version of Bitcoin has changed into something that's not what was defined by Satoshi or the Bitcoin.org website or the Bitcoin white paper. It have insisted on keeping the Bitcoin name, whereas Bitcoin Cash most closely resembles the version of Bitcoin that you and I both got involved with in I 2011. Don't agree. I don't agree. This is my point of view, so you can you're <laughs> that free you, to, that you're you free got to, involved. You're free to disagree with it, yeah. and uh, I, I think I've made a very compelling case, and I've made videos and given talks about this. And so, what really bothers me is that the BTC version has insisted on keeping the Bitcoin name and attack the Bitcoin Cash people for even having the Bitcoin name in their name at all. Yet it's the one that most closely resembles the version of Bitcoin as outlined by the original Bitcoin white paper, Satoshi Nakamoto and Bitcoin.org. That's what really bothers me. And the fact that they did it using all sorts of censorship and propaganda to where I can't even post my opinions on our Bitcoin or my posts will be deleted. Uh, I find that really, really disappointing when Bitcoin well, is mean, supposed to be a censorship like resistant another currency. Hour of conversation about yeah. censorship. Sure. I think from my point of view, I think I've told you, right? It's So maybe I'll sum it up with a, with a quick question. Do you think it's a good or a bad thing that my posts are deleted from our Bitcoin when I state my opinion on Bitcoin? I think it's bad. Okay. I don't agree. That. I don't agree with the how tightly moderated Bitcoin our Bitcoin is, um, but it is a private forum. I mean, I've posted stuff about Litecoin that I think applies to Bitcoin and then it's gone deleted. So yeah, I don't agree with it, um, but... You I'm glad your, to hear that one, Charlie. So. Thanks. You have your own forum. Um, you have your own website, and and yeah, you can promote whatever you want. And people can't say that you shouldn't be doing this. Um, it is it is what it is. Um, yeah, but I think I still want to talk about the fact that Litecoin is the real Bitcoin, according to you last year. According to me, last year. According to your definition. I, I, according to my definition. Yeah, no, because Litecoin fulfilled nine of ten. I think I, I, I the took for granted point, that it has to point, generate right? or originate from the... tenth point is not that important, and I proved it to you, because uh, you, it could be changed. You, you, you definitely convinced me on SHA-256, uh, proof of work. In in the light of there being some catastrophic error, I think the new coin using a different proof of work would still be the Bitcoin, but that, that error hasn't happened. Sure. So I think if if somebody decided to fork off from, from whichever version of Bitcoin and use something other than SHA-256, which has actually already happened... I think that their claim to being Bitcoin is, is pretty darn weak. Yeah, but you know, like these definitions of Bitcoin, they're, they don't really define Bitcoin. For example, like Bitcoin Cash has um, emergency difficulty adjustment, right? That's not That's in different. That's not in the white paper. I agree. That's and the difference. white paper doesn't talk about that. The white paper, ta white paper talks about a pretty standard def difficulty adjustment of Every Bitcoin, Every 2,000 right? blocks or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so does that make Bitcoin Cash not Bitcoin? No, I don't think that makes Bitcoin Cash not Bitcoin. It, it, it actually, right? it detracts a little bit from its, its Bitcoinness. I would say it does detract from its Bitcoinness. Sure, that's a major, <laughs> major, the, the diff, emergency difficulty adjustment algorithm is a major change from the original structure of uh, Bitcoin. Sure it is. And, and things do upgrade over time. So like if Bitcoin had itself had an issue with difficulty algorithm adjustment, it would upgrade and fix it, right? So I think they would. They'd have if, a hard fork to do it too, right? If needed, right? That doesn't make it not Bitcoin, right? So I think just sticking to trying to define Bitcoin based off of what the white paper says is kind of silly. So you, you if we can backtrack a little bit. So you said you were excited about cryptocurrencies because of sound money. Yeah. What are you trying to accomplish with sound money? Um, I think it's sound money is something that we've 
really never had and like money that, that what, is what do you good. want to change in the world with sound money existing what is it that you hope to be different with sound money I want people to have the freedom of using money without government controls without anyone being able to stop them I want um, economic freedom I mean kind of similar to to what you want does right? Bitcoin Cash help advance those goals to be honest no do you know why Tell because why. Bitcoin Cash is not sound money I if you watched my presentation, I watched it, and I think I just absolutely shredded your knowledge about economics. You said Bitcoin has intrinsic value, and you were advocating the labor theory of value. I think anybody that's picked up even their high school economics book you, would think that that's absolute nonsense. You disagreed with one point of. I disagreed with the very one title of, of your talk. One Bit, of my slides. Bitcoin's intrinsic value. Nothing has intrinsic value. The value is in the mind of the beholder, not in the object itself. If there were no, this table well, is I mean, valuable to us because we have our water and microphones sitting on top of it. Because if there were no human beings around this table, the table would have no value whatsoever. The value is in the mind of the beholder, and the labor theory of value is absolute nonsense. So if somebody spent a million hours crafting this table, it doesn't make it a more useful or more valuable table because they spent a bunch of labor to produce it. So Marx's labor theory of value is absolute nonsense, which is exactly what you were promoting in your talk today. And okay. I hope you'll, you'll go and pick up an economics remove, book and to study it a remove, bit more. Let's remove that one point. From okay, so you, you'll concede that point at this point? Let's assume I concede that point. Right. You the do, other, or, or we're just going to assume? Let's, let's assume we, I can see okay. that. So point, you don't actually right? concede because the I labor I, theory of value. I don't want to keep arguing about this, right? So let's assume I concede that okay. point. So you think, My other three points still stand. So you do think right? that the labor theory of value mean, might still be correct, though? No. Okay. Let's con, let you me, do or don't? I don't. Okay. So the yeah. labor theory of value is wrong. Correct. Okay. So the, what was outlined in your slides were completely my, wrong. What was today. outlined in my slide was not the labor theory of value. People go watch the video on YouTube. You were very clearly up on stage advocating the labor theory of value as why Bitcoin has value because it's hard to produce. You were right there let's on stage. Let's not go back in. World. Let's go, not go in okay. circles. Okay. Continue. So, my why Bitcoin and Litecoin are sound sound money. It's because it's money that cannot be devalued, counterfeited, taken away, reversed, and cannot be blocked from spending. And Bitcoin so, Cash doesn't have those characteristics. Yeah, and I explained in my in my. Uh, you explained how it could potentially possibly maybe happen yeah so bitcoin cash has six percent of the bitcoin network mm -hmm. of the bitcoin hashing network yep so it's there's a threat of attack it's I, if i were if i had bitcoin cash i'd be scared of it right it's it's like if i if my house so, is not built for so the exact same ta attack could be from bitcoin cash towards btc though as well no, because Bitcoin has 94% of the hash rate. And maybe Bill Gates is going to have an epiphany and think, oh my God, Bitcoin Cash is the best form of money. And he buys up enough Bitcoin Cash to where the price of Bitcoin Cash becomes but more than BTC. And then the it. hash rate swings in the other direction. That's so, a different So I agree. It's it's more risky at the moment for Bitcoin okay. Cash. I, I totally agree than it is for BTC. So, but the okay, risk is on me, both, finish, both coins right? there. There is risk on and, both and coins. And if I can add a little bit more, it's riskier for BTC because of the difficulty adjustment algorithm is only every 2,000 blocks rather than after every block on Bitcoin Cash. So and I agree. if the hash rate moves quickly Correct. from BTC to Bitcoin Cash, it's much, much more dangerous for BTC than it is for Bitcoin Cash because the BTC chain could come to a screeching halt, whereas the Bitcoin Cash chain, maybe there'll be a reorg and somebody will mine a bunch of blocks, but it's not going to come to a screeching halt. So that's a very, very big difference that should make BTC holders cautious about holding BTC. Do we agree or disagree? Um on that proposed scenario no i mean you're you're kind of saying an extreme scenario which is exactly what you had in your presentation it's not an extreme, extreme scenario it's not an extreme scenario a small mining farm can attack bitcoin cash i don't think bitcoin. a small mining farm has six percent of the global hash rate of bitcoin not even close a large mining farm i, I don't think I, I doubt that there's a single mining farm in the entire world that has enough hash rate to do that so it would take multiple giant farms around the world okay so a small mining pool can do it I don't think uh, I don't think that that's likely to happen because the economic incentives are absolutely not there for it to happen. Well, I explained in my in my talk right. And so the fact that there's if they're shorting Bitcoin, they attack Bitcoin Cash, causes Bitcoin Cash okay. to drop in value. And if you think it's possible, and they Charlie, subtract to Bitcoin. I don't tell me to do possible, attack Bitcoin do it. Cash. Why not? Because I'm you not said it's not sound money and saying, it's not helping bring more economic freedom to the world. There is a threat, right? The okay. threat is real. So I said I'm involved in Bitcoin Cash because I want to bring more economic freedom to the world. You said you don't think Bitcoin Cash does that. But you said you also want to bring more economic freedom to the world. So if it's not doing that, and you said it's actively hurting that, please attack it and stop it and prove the world that you're right. 
I'm not. I'm here to help Bitcoin and Litecoin be sound money for the world to use. So I, I think I appreciate time, your efforts, but man, your lack of economic understanding was really, really sad on stage. The labor theory of value is absolute nonsense. And you spent your whole presentation talking about Bitcoin has intrinsic value, which doesn't exist due to the amount of effort that goes into creating a, a Bitcoin. The, la the amount of labor that goes into producing something does not affect its value. It's the usefulness of that item or that product or that good to the person that wants to use it that gives it its value. You are very good at delivering a point. I give you that. I think it's important. And you know what, Charlie? I'll go and use my Bitcoin Cash on purse.io and I'll buy you a copy of a Economics in One Lesson by Henry Hazlitt. It's one of my very favorite economics books that I've given as gifts to lots of people, not just you. And I hope you'll make the time to read it because it'll really open your eyes to the way the world works and how important prices are and, and how you know disastrous government intervention in the market is. So uh, Henry Hazlitt, uh, Economics in One Lesson, it's available for free online, but I'll buy you a, a copy using Bitcoin Cash uh, on purse.io, my favorite website, because you can get 30% off everything from Amazon. <laughs> my voice is starting to fade and I'm feeling a little bit seasick looking out the window. Are you, are you uh, I'm okay. good I'm at this okay. point? Thank you very, very much, Charlie, for mm. being such a good sport. So and I, I do enjoy talking with you. So I didn't run away. Thank you. You certainly didn't run away. You hear that, Samson? Charlie didn't run away. So next time you're well, around, Samson, we can have part Samson, three. Samson told you to come find me on a cruise. And you did. He did, yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So thank you, Samson, for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Sure. Okay. We're good. <clears throat> <clears throat>